if you are a realtor and your buyer is going to insert bank here, be sure that you are very proficient at asking the question, is this an overlay or does this actually exist in the guidelines? You can have a higher PMI at a lower interest rate and you're just distracted by the interest rate and you don't realize that that's not the best structure. All of these things are affected by overlays. Today, we're going to cover the most important topic that exists in mortgages that no one actually talks about. It's an important topic if you are a realtor or if you are a potential buyer, or even if you're a loan officer, you need to understand this topic and understand how it applies to you and how you are able to serve your clients or how you're able to be serviced if you're a buyer or how you serve your clients if you're actually a mortgage lender. Today, we're going to talk about the topic of overlays, okay? Overlays. Now, this is a very important topic and it affects every single lender, whether you are a mortgage broker, whether you work for a bank or whatever. All right. So the best way for me to explain an overlay is like this. All right. So I grew up in rural South Carolina. Okay. When I was growing up in South Carolina, my mom was a preacher. My dad was an alcoholic. When we were growing up, my mom had certain rules that she had because she didn't want us to go down the path that my dad went down. One of those rules were, if you're a teenager, you had to be in the house by 11.59.59, okay? Um, there was no way around it. If you went out for a date, you were going to the movies or whatever, you had to be back home by 11.59. And that was often difficult because we lived about an hour away from the movies or the skating rink and all of the things that we like to go do. We were an hour and a half away, but you had to be back home in time. Now, there are people watching this video right now that were straight heathens as teenagers. And you stayed out past midnight and regularly came home after midnight into your parents' house. That means that it is legal for you to do. You just couldn't do it if you lived in my mom's house. That's precisely what an overlay is. There are things that are legal for you to do by the guidelines, whether you're talking VA, FHA, or conventional, according to the conforming loan limits and the uh, guidelines that we as originators have to operate by, there are things that are legal for you to do, but you can't do them in certain people's house. Credit score is probably the most common overlay. This is a minimum credit score that the lending institution establishes for them to do certain loans. For example, let's say your buyer is going to, and I'm just picking a bank for example, okay, Navy Federal Credit Union. Let's say your buyer is going to Navy Federal Credit Union got nothing against Navy Federal Credit Union to have multiple accounts there. However, let's say your buyer goes there and they want to do a VA loan at Navy Federal Credit Union. And the originator working at Navy Federal Credit Union comes out and says, hey, Mr. Veteran, Mr. Active Duty Service Member, your credit score is a 600 and we need your credit score to be at a 620 credit, uh, FICO score in order for us to lend on a VA loan. I think that's Navy Federal's minimum, not sure, but just for example. So, so you have to be at a 620 in order from the lend, uh, in order for Navy Federal to lend on this, on this score. So the originator says, we need you to go away, go find, you know, uh, a credit repair person or whatever, get your credit score up, come back in three to four months when your credit score is higher, and then we'll lend on a VA loan. That sounds real logical. Now I can tell you what Navy Federal did not say. Navy Federal did not say, hey, we can't lend on a 620 FICO score, but if you go across the street, or if you call this person, they may lend at a lower FICO score. Navy Federal has just communicated something that is an overlay for them that's limiting to the buyer. So if you need to understand this, if you are a realtor and your buyer is going to insert bank here, be sure that you are very proficient at asking the question, is this an overlay or does this actually exist in the guidelines? I will see realtors put out information. They will say, Hey, you know, minimum credit score for an FHA loan is 580. Not true. We close FHA loans below 580. The minimum credit score is not 580. They are communicating something that likely they were told by another lender and that lender communicated to them a overlay of that particular bank or that particular lending institution. So you need to be very good at asking the question about, is this an overlay or is there another way to get this done? Okay. So 
Some common types of overlays. Now, I just told you that credit score is probably the most common type of overlay, okay? And understand that an overlay is when there are government guidelines on things, and then the individual banks do to minimizing their risk and uh, optimizing their risk profile, they will put certain guidelines in certain areas in order to protect the interests of the lending institution, which is normal for any bank to do. So the most common one is credit score, okay, on all types of loans. So you might have somebody who won't go below a 680 or something like that on a conventional loan. That's because they want to optimize their credit profile or the, the amount of buyers in a particular profile that they want to have on their portfolio. You might have an FHA guideline or an FHA overlay at a company that says, hey, we don't go below 580 on an FHA. That's a common number at about 580 on an FHA. Uh, VA, you might have a guideline at say 580 also. That's a common guideline. We personally go down, we have lending institutions that we work with that go down to 500 on an FHA loan. Now there are certain other guidelines that they have to meet, but the credit score alone is not a disqualifier. So credit score is probably the most common type of overlay. Manual underwrites, VA manual, FHA manual, things like that. That is another type of overlay that you might see a company put into place. Maybe they say you have to get approved eligible on what we call our automated underwriting system in order for them to accept that loan. But there are other lenders that will accept what we call manual underwrites on VA and FHA and USDA on government loans. Whether they accept those or not could be another uh, overlay that a bank puts into place. The other one, escrow waivers. Escrow waivers might be another thing that people put in place. now in the state of Texas, which I am in, in the state of Texas, it is extremely beneficial for a buyer to waive escrows if the lender allows you to. Because if you waive escrows, you are actually reducing the amount that you pay in closing costs. If you have not seen it yet, go watch my other video that talks about five creative ways to reduce closing costs, and you will understand this more. I don't have time to get into that in this video, but whether you can or cannot waive escrows, conventional buyers, some conventional buyers we allow with one of the lenders that we work with, we allow the buyer to waive escrows at just 3% down as a first time home buyer. Most other lenders will only allow you to waive escrows at 20% down, but waiving escrows at 3% down significantly reduces your closing costs. Go look at the other video if you have questions about that. Everything that somebody does in a mortgage process is pretty much affected by the overlays of the bank, whether the bank allows you to do it, which leads me to the point of why interest rate is not always the most important factor when you're getting a mortgage. Now, interest rate is an important factor, but if let's say you're being offered a 6.5 at one place and that place is not allowing you to waive escrows and you're being offered a 6.3 uh, at a oh sorry a 6.75 at another place but that 6.75 place is allowing you to waive escrows your closing costs could be substantially lower at the 6.75 interest rate and you could find that mortgage structure to be substantially better than the lower interest rate and let's throw in PMI in there. You can have a higher PMI at a lower interest rate and you're just distracted by the interest rate and you don't realize that that's not the best structure. All of these things are affected by overlays and the overlays of each individual lender. I'll tell you a story here. I was uh, stepping off a stage in Vegas. I was asked to come speak, come to Vegas, speak at a conference. Realtor partner gives me a call, Brandon Dow. Shout out to him, DFW, great guy, treats people like family. Can't recommend a better realtor for you, but Brandon is a phenomenal agent and his team does absolutely great work. So Brandon calls me up. Brandon says, hey man, I've got a veteran here and we're on hold to close because we can't get a lease agreement on the property that he's vacating and we can't close on a new house. I said, is the veteran doing a VA loan? He says, yes, he is doing a VA loan. I said, well, that's not a guideline. And the bank that he was working with doing that mortgage was putting that overlay in place that he had to have a lease on the vacating property that he was leaving in order to buy a new property. Now that is not a VA guideline. That is a conventional guideline. And that bank was just putting that guideline in place to protect the risk of the bank. So um, I said, yeah, man, that's not a guideline. That's an overlay that that bank is putting in place. 
he said, okay, great. Can we've been sitting around for two weeks trying to find somebody to lease out the property. Can I send them over to you? And maybe you can help close the loan. Yes, I can help close the loan. I left Vegas, went to Hawaii for six days. The day I got back, we were signing on that loan because, and the only hold up to the loan was the, it was a cookie cutter loan, very simple loan. The bank was putting in place an overlay that prevented the veteran from buying at his new place. That's the power of overlays. So if you're a realtor, you really need to understand this and understand the impact that overlays can have on your transactions. Another overlay is escrow holdbacks. Whether the lender allows you to hold money in escrow after closing is an overlay. Okay. So you need to be aware of these things and how they affect your transaction. Okay. Now, all of that being said, people often ask me, well, major, do you have any overlays? The answer to that question is as a collective, the answer is no, I don't have any overlays when buyers work with me. Why is it that I don't have any overlays when buyers work with me? Because I have access to 140 different banks. So if you have access to 140 different banks and you can pretty much figure out what the buyer needs and what's needed to close that loan or what's needed to uh, finish that transaction or give the buyer the loan structure that they need, you have to just figure out which bank go to go to to figure out how that structure is going to work and what you need for that particular buyer. So mortgage brokers don't particularly have overlays. They don't. They don't have overlays because they have access to so many banks. And if one bank says, hey, we can't do that here or we are not allowed to do that here just because of our lending institution and how we structure our loans, well, great. I'm going to send that loan over to another lender that does allow those things to happen. So this is probably not the sexiest video I've done. This is probably not an exciting topic. It is not. This is not a very dramatic topic, but you had better understand this if you are a realtor or if you're an originator, because you have to know as an originator what your company's guidelines are and how your overlays work within your company. And if you're a buyer, and you want to do something that's very unique, something like even something as simple as a, a two one uh, uh, interest rate buy down or a temporary rate buy down. If you want to do a two one buy down, by the way, I have a video on that that explains what those are. Two one interest rates buy down. That's a video I have called how to get a low interest rate in uh, 2024, how to get an interest rate in the threes and fours in 2024. Go take a look at that video. But if you're buying a house, you need to understand this topic of overlays. And this is why I always recommend working with a mortgage broker because they have the ability with the most amount of options and the most amount of flexibility to serve you and your family. So the topic is overlays. Make sure if you're a realtor, you are proficient at asking the question, Hey, lender, is this an overlay or is this a guideline according to the government guidelines? So that's it for this one. See you next time on Major Money Matters.